Hello, yeah, my name is Pete Quinn Davis. This is Tony Davy from the museum just over the road. Um, just a few thanks really to ISSR from the very beginning. Basically, if we had not connected to ISSR, our partners or our projects that we'd been helping uh, our collaborators with would never have come to fruition. Uh, so we've worked through a series of different characters of the School of Nursing, uh, School of Dentistry, Business School, uh, School of Marine Science and Engineering and IDAT. Our outside partners are right the way through throughout Devon, sometimes uh, in London as well, so we've, we've actually used our connection to ISSR to foster those collaborations as well. Our new collaboration in a sort of modest way is with uh, Tony and the uh, Plymouth City Council. You notice that I've given you some numbers, so you sort of know that basically when it gets down to 12, it's coffee time. <laughs> We've been working on this um, project called the Distributed Museum. It's creating a movable instant museum that can happen anytime, anywhere. And Tony will just describe why this came about in the first place. Okay, uh, good morning. Um, just to, to give you a bit of background, uh, for those of you who may not have seen in the media or have or not from Plymouth, um, Plymouth City Council has just been awarded last year Stage 1 Heritage Lottery funding to develop uh, what we're loosely calling at the moment the History Centre. And the History Centre is uh, not going to be the final name, you'll be glad to hear, that's just our working title. Um, the History Centre is bringing together the collections held currently at the museum, but also at Plymouth and West Devon Record Office, so the archive collections, South West Film and Television Archive, South West Image Bank, and the local reference uh, and local studies library, all under one roof, um, in a new build on the back of the current library and museum building. All right, and that will also be being repurposed. As part of that, we will be closing, and we will be closing from the summer of next year for at least three years. Now, part of our, um, our remit as a, as a City Council Arts and Heritage Service is to engage with the wider community um, across the city and beyond. Now, that's not just about the, those that would normally walk into the museum or normally walk into the library service. It's really about getting alongside communities and working with communities to look at their stories and engage with their heritage and have those communities that traditionally don't walk in through the door feel as though they can contribute and be part of the city's story. Um, so uh, that's partly what I do, that's what my role is. I'm a learning development officer and I do a number of sort of project-based uh, project based work where I work with either communities of interest, so for example, you may have seen in recent years a, a big project called Pride in Our Past, which is working with Plymouth's LGBT community to uh, establish uh, an LGBT archive within the traditional archives and also have an exhibition, etc. Um, through to community areas such as Devonport, working with young people in Devonport looking at um, the wall going up in the 1950s to the wall coming down and re bringing Devonport back together again. Um, that kind of thing is the type of work I do. You know, I can do that project-wise or I can do that on an on a ad hoc basis where there can be an open day at a community centre and we can turn up. Um, and that's what we generally call pop-up. We pop up uh, across the city to try and engage with the community. Now, what's we've previously had is uh, that wonderful tradition of getting a fold-up table and putting it out and putting a tablecloth on top and then sticking an object or some documents on top of that. Um, or we've had this wonderful contraption, um, which is our old outreach display, um, which, as you can see, is rather cumbersome and uh, difficult to manoeuvre and isn't particularly the best-looking of, of uh, contraptions. So we were conscious that in order for us to engage with the community, we really needed to find something that we wanted uh, the, that the community would, would catch their eye um, and would the, the display itself would become a talking point. Um, so we approached uh, the university uh, in particular 
we approached uh, 3D design um, and we gave them a brief. And that brief was to create a simple, portable structure using sustainable materials. Um, really, it was about using the pop-up to spark a conversation. We want people to engage with the museum, engage with uh, the city's heritage um, in innovative ways. It can be, we, that may be that we could rock up at a supermarket or a nursery school. Um, uh, what I'll do is hand it over to Pete so he can explain where, once we had approached 3D design, what they did with that brief. I think the important thing for us is that we um, and our, some of our, my colleagues and collaborators will uh, testify to this as well, is that design is a very, very complex thing. As we all know, being human beings, we use it for many, many different purposes uh, and sometimes not for good. So for us, it's very interesting and important to introduce new design thinking skills new system skills, basically, to allow design to be spoken about and talked about and seen in a completely different way. A colleague of mine from uh, Northumberland recently, Northumbria University, has done a research project with the Design Council where they've asked designers and groups of designers who are in their 40s to literally write a quick um, note about what sustainability means to them. Now, in, in, the, in a traditional classic design process, sustainability is not even mentioned within the process itself because it costs too much money. They ask the same question to designers who are 28 and in the young design team, and their question was sustainability is right in the beginning of everything that we do. And that is important for us in terms of a design department. So when Tony came over, we had a couple of design students from MA um, James and Adam, James Trancalis and Adam Billsborough, who were going to hopefully stay in Plymouth and set up a design company themselves. It was right up their street, and really what inspired them was a conversation with people and a conversation with people around objects. The important thing for them and for us is that we use a series of design thinking to, uh, tools. This is from Edwin Jachatsky, but we use a series of these, and they are not linear, it's the way that this is, described, but they are meandering. So these meanders happen in all sorts of different time scales and in all sorts of different relationships. So we have cyclic, solar, safe, efficient, and solar. And in many ways, some of you will recognize these things in your own practices as well. So this was important for us to employ these things in a very real um, time slot. The nice thing about that is that obviously because we're designers and we like things to look good, we had to have it looking beautiful. That was part of the brief. <laughs> <laughs> we had, it obviously had to be useful. It had to be resilient and we used an interesting composite bamboo material which actually was a, a first for us and actually the guys have gone on to do some work with Schumacher in their new library using the same material. It's almost like a bamboo plywood. It's quite incredible. It's got an amazing grain to it and a lovely, lovely end grain. It's also very, very heavy and delightful but, and resilient. So the nice thing about this is the guys that actually put these slightly different add-ons to it to sort of perhaps personalise the display as it, as it generated. The other thing about it is that obviously it all has to pack into a van because these guys have got to distribute it at some point in a school you know, close to you soon. So it had to be desirable and good to look at. And that's it really. I mean the nice thing about this project for us is that it will be launched on Friday. I think they did the last oiling yesterday. We did, yeah. yeah. Um, recently, if you, if you, when you go for coffee, which is, yeah, to slide 12, you will actually see um, there's a small um, upcycling project that we did with Thomas, Heather, Thomas Heatherwick's studio yesterday. And there's a range of little objects that our second year students did with uh, his studio yesterday. Thomas Heatherwick of uh, Olympics, um, the new Routemaster bus, the taxi, the, the seed bank in China, Shanghai, etc., etc. So a very interesting person to work with. But yeah, please take a look at our stuff in the foyer as well. Uh, can I just say, if you, if you really want to see 
the, the uh, unit that was made. The first, uh, we're revealing it on Friday at the launch of Plymouth History Festival, which goes throughout May. Um, but the first sort of public viewing where it will be um, in a, 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 it's perfect for what we were doing. We're putting it up in Hamill's house, which is a historical building in Devonport, which used to be the Admiralty House, but is now a, a drug and alcohol rehabilitation day centre. And the house is being opened up by, uh, by the service and service users are being tour guides for the house for the day. And that's on May the 6th. Um, but you can check out all the different events. But you'll be able to come along and see the unit in action on that day in a, in a historical environment, but being used by the community, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. Thank you very much. Thank you.